at the beginning, I would like to ask a question. How many of you have known what a smart city is? Or how many of you have imaged the life in a smart city? If the answer is yes, please raise your hand. A few. I have imagined. It looks like from a science fiction movie, isn't it? But actually it's not. It's just a smart helmet I used for my teaching in class. Well, what I can see is that most of us agree a smart city seems far away from us. But is that true? Today, I would like to share my vision and some personal experience about living in a smart city. So let's start with what a smart city means. The literature gives us three key components for a smart city. The first, device. Device means something that can collect data. It can be a sensor or just a smartphone. In a smart city, it needs tens of thousands of these kind of devices that can collect a huge amount of data. Second, connection. It means that devices are connected to the internet so that the data can be shared and transferred. Third, intelligence. Intelligence is the most important part for a smart city. It means the city can analyze the data and provide intelligent decisions. We also call this artificial intelligence, like AlphaGo. In a smart city, these intelligent decisions help us live more convenient, healthy, and productive. If we take a city like a human body, the devices are like our eyes and ears, they are receiving information. The connection is like our neural system that is delivering the information to our brain, and of course, the intelligence part works like our brain. Good, so far you all know what a smart city is, or I assume you do. Then I would like to ask you a question, how many of you would like to do or think, agree, you are part of smart city now? Very few. So let me ask you another question in another way. How many of you have ever used the navigation app like Google Map? I can see many. Congratulations, you are connected to a smart city. <laughs> so let's say your phone is a device that can collect data, and your phone is connected to the internet and you use intelligent road guidance for driving, for example, for detour. Right? In fact, we have entered a new era of smart cities. You, me, and all of us are part of the smart city. The only difference is how much we are involved. There are many benefits for living in a smart city. For example, a self-driving car. This new technology can help solve many critical problems for urban life, especially the traffic jam. This is a self-driving car developed by MSU. We can see the car has many sensors in the front, back, and the top. They are the devices collecting data. The car is also connected to the internet so that it can talk with other cars, roads, and bridges, and buildings. The most important, the car is intelligent. It can drive by itself. You may not realize, but the self-driving car will be part of our life at Michigan State. Our campus is to build as the biggest testing site for the self-driving car in the nation. And the site includes 5,200 acres of urban, suburban, industrial, and the rural zones 
with 545 occupied buildings and more than 17,000 students and faculty who are working and studying there. And we will have self-driving buses placed on campus this year. Hooray! Or maybe next. <laughs> to make this happen, we have installed many sensors on campus, and we will do more. We will make sure the buses are intelligent because they know where a road is, where a sidewalk is, where a human is, where a car is, and where their friend buses is. I promise you this message is true because I was so lucky being part of this team. At this time, I would like to ask you another question. How many of you would like to buy and use the self-driving car for your life? Well, no, not that many, but I'm not surprised because my wife gave me the same answer. <laughs> I agreed because we have two principles at home. First, wife is always correct. And the second, always refer to the first. <laughs> you may not realize, but you are part of smart city. Humans spend 90% of time in buildings, and the buildings where we work and live are becoming smart. For example, the building will know under what temperature you feel most comfortable, and they can set up that temperature for you automatically. I also promise this message is true because I'm teaching the smart building technologies. You may not realize, but you are part of the smart city. When people are doing physical exercise at home, for example, Zumba. <laughs> Their health information is collected and connected to the city through wearable devices like a smart watch or smart ring. In this case, your health standard is monitored and checked 355 days a year, and you can totally remove your annual doctor appointments from your calendar. Again, I promise this message is true because they are my family and that is my son. <laughs> Studies already show the diffusion of innovation is not a problem about technology or engineering. Instead, it's more about human's psychological acceptance. That means if you think in a different way, things may be different. I have another question. Sorry, professor, I always like asking questions. <laughs> But this time, I only ask my wife, if your car can find a parking spot and park by itself, especially the parallel, <laughs> will you change your mind? Guess what I got? She said, well, I think we need a conversation with a dealer. <laughs> I agreed again, you know, we have principles. We are already a part of smart city, and living in a smart city can bring us tens of benefits that can make our life easier. So, why not just open our minds, be smart, and enjoy the smart? Thank you very much. <laughs>